results of a year-long investigation Wednesday on Channel 5 News. There's a radical environmentalists have taken what was once a noble cause and made it their own platform for power and control. They want to prevent the people from coming out here and actually using the land. I think that the environmental movement has had the intent of eliminating private property rights all along. They call themselves the Wise Youth Movement, and they're mad. We intend to destroy the environmental movement once and for all by offering a better alternative. The growing movement which says it's the environmentalists who are wrecking the country. Tonight, conservative commentator Rush Limbaugh faces off against Senator Al Gore. The actual proposal... This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. It has been for a good many years now one of those motherhood and apple pie kind of issues. There was more or less universal agreement with the old 60s slogan that it's not nice to fool with Mother Nature. Even those who did not necessarily agree with that premise found it prudent to disagree quietly. But if the environment enjoyed near unanimous public support, environmental issues were generally regarded as something of a bore. One of our guests tonight, Senator Al Gore, tried to place environmental issues at the center of his presidential campaign four years ago and watched in dismay as the public's eyes glazed over and we in the media paid little or no attention. Our second guest, on the other hand, has carved out a substantial niche for himself in the broadcasting cosmos over 11 and a half million listeners by questioning and often ridiculing much of what environmentalists regard as dogma. Ozone depletion and the greenhouse effect? Unproved, says Rush Limbaugh. Animal rights and the environmental movement? Seized by extremists who've lost all sense of proportion. Ironically, what Rush Limbaugh has done is to breathe new life and controversy into the subject. But while his may be the most widely heard voice on this subject, he is certainly not, as Michael Gillen now reports, alone. Northern California. For a hundred years, farmers in Glen and Calusa counties have been using the Sacramento River to water their crops, valued at millions of dollars a year. But the water pumps are sucking in and killing Chinook salmon, an endangered species. So the federal government wants to turn the pumps off this summer, a move that could endanger the livelihood of Sue Sutton and thousands of other farmers. The Endangered Species Act right now is not taking into consideration any of the impact on human needs and or the economic impact. Across the country, in Cambridge, Maryland, Peggy Regal and her husband invested their life savings in a 138-acre farm. But now they can't do anything with it because the government has suddenly declared it wetlands, a move that has soured her attitude towards environmentalists. I think the environmental movement started out with a very noble cause. And, but any good idea carried to an extreme becomes a very bad idea. For a lot of people in this country, the environmental movement has gone too far. Wide open spaces like these, they say, are crowding out their rights as Americans. What's more, they're organizing into a powerful nationwide coalition. And their battle cry is, the environmental movement has become an environmental disaster. Property rights! Property rights! Critics call them anti-environmentalists, but they call themselves the wise use movement. At this Las Vegas demonstration last month, they described themselves as people who want to use the land wisely, Property not just set it aside for safekeeping. The best thing for the resources is us being out there. The wise use movement represents individual people, individual rights, the private individual. The wise use movement is an unlikely combination, a hodgepodge of several hundred organizations, everything from the National Rifle Association, which wants to use the land for hunting, to the timber industry, which wants to use the land for logging, to recreational vehicle enthusiasts who want to use the land for reaching the wide open spaces, to Exxon, which would like to use the land for oil drilling, to ordinary citizens like Peggy Regal, who simply want to use the land to build their dream house. We intend to destroy the environmental movement once and for all by offering a better alternative, the wise youth movement. 
We think that people really want man and nature to live together in productive harmony and not to be subservient to nature or some, somebody's idea of nature. Three years ago, Arnold helped write the Wise Use Agenda, which spells out the movement's top 25 goals. For example, they would allow oil drilling in Alaska's Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, so long as it's done carefully. They would allow mining on all public lands, including wilderness areas and national parks. And they want to build more stores, lodges, and concession stands in all national parks, national monuments, and major historical areas. You know, you look at the agenda and it says graze everywhere, mine everywhere, log everywhere. The only good endangered species is a dead endangered species. And I really can't believe that that is what the American people that they claim they represent are in favor of. In recent years, major environmental groups, including the Sierra Club, have become big business with 7 million members and $500 million in assets. By comparison, the wise use movement is puny. They claim about 3 million members and a combined annual budget of 5 to $10 million. Still, they talk big. The environmental movement is the establishment now. And now we are the rebels coming to tear them down. Now they're Goliath and we're David. And we intend to put the stone in their head. I've got to take them seriously and uh, I've got to try to figure out how to counter their arguments, how to expose them, so that the key decision makers in this country aren't intimidated by them. This year, key decision makers in Washington will have their hands full. Two environmental cornerstones are up for renewal. The Endangered Species Act and the Clean Water Act, with its all-important wetlands provisions. Wise users are against them, environmentalists are for them, and most regulators are caught in the middle. You either have to be for environmental protection or for growth and development, and never the twain shall meet. And I'm saying to you that growth and development and environmental protection have to come together. According to a CNN Time Magazine poll this week, the American public itself is having a hard time figuring out how it feels about the environmental movement. 50% favor going full speed ahead to clean up the environment, but then 51% believe that environmentalists go too far in their demands on business and government. The dilemma is as urgent as today's headlines. NASA scientists report that the ozone layer is under attack by man-made chemicals, not only above the North and South Poles, but also above the United States. A depleted ozone layer could let in more ultraviolet radiation, which could ultimately lead to more skin cancers, cataracts, and diseases of the immune system. This kind of news is never welcome, but especially not now. Our planet's health is failing, but so is our nation's economy. We can't afford the health hazard of a weakened ozone layer, but neither can we afford the cost of fixing it right away. It's a sobering reminder of just how crucial the emerging environmental debate is going to be. There is a good deal at stake. Should man have the right to use the Earth, or should man not have a right to use the Earth? We come down on the first position, we have a right to be here, no less than the trees and the stars. I think it's just completely arrogant for any human to turn around and say, our particular development is more important so that we can remove one of God's creations off the face of this earth forever. This is supposed to be the environmental decade, a time when we defend the earth against the assaults of man. But now the wise use movement wants to defend man against the assaults of an environmental movement they claim has lost sight of one very important reality. This country, they say, can no longer afford to save the earth at all costs. For Nightline, I'm Michael Gillen in New York. When we come back, we'll be joined by Senator Al Gore of Tennessee, who champions environmental issues, and by conservative commentator Rush Limbaugh, a frequent critic of environmentalists who charges that they use the pretense of an emergency to push for radical measures that undermine the American way of life. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by UPS. Each year, corporate America spends over $10 billion on overnight shipping. Yet according to a report in the Wall Street Journal, $3 billion of that is wasted. If you find that kind of inefficiency alarming, call UPS. We can save you up to 40% on overnight deliveries and help prevent your profits from going up in smoke. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. These slip down one more time. I'm fed up with glasses that don't fit. You don't have to put up with glasses that don't fit anymore. 
Because at Lens Crafters, we have so many new ways to make glasses more comfortable. Lens Crafters glasses fit your snug points with features like new snug fit hinges that hug your head and won't lose their gentle hold. Lens Crafters, for that cushion of comfort you've always wanted. I never knew glasses could be this comfortable. Lens Crafters, better fit for greater comfort in about an hour. This is it, your last chance to get 2.9% financing for 48 months on all 91 and 92 Escorts. Hurry, it's your last chance to get this limited-time special offer from your Ford dealer. Choose the Sporty GT, the Spacious Wagon, the Sleek LX, even the new 92 Escort sedan. 2.9 financing for 48 months on any new Escort. You can't beat the savings. Now is the time to buy. See your local Ford dealer, because this is your last chance. Health coverage for children provided through the school. If they can insure the uninsured in Florida, will it work elsewhere in the country? On ABC's World News Tonight, tomorrow. Joining us from our Washington studio now is Senator Al Gore of Tennessee, whose new book is Earth in the Balance, Ecology and the Human Spirit. And joining us from our New York studio is Rush Limbaugh, whose syndicated radio show is heard across the country. There is, Senator Gore, uh, a growing feeling, I don't want to say it represents anything approaching a majority yet, but a growing feeling that sometimes the environmentalists are putting the spotted owl and the snail darter ahead of human beings. Well, I think you've got really two separate issues discussed in your setup piece, Ted. There are local conflicts involving the use of public lands and some laws that impinge on private property owners. And there are some legitimate complaints, no doubt. They're in the tiny minority, but there are legitimate complaints. On the other hand, we now face a global ecological crisis that is more serious than anything human civilization has ever faced. And there's a, there's a problem of scale here. To discuss uh, the, the friction in, in the passage and implementation of some of the laws on, on the local environment and to weigh at the same time that against this unprecedented global crisis, I, I think presents a, a problem of scale. You're I talking mean, now about the hole in the ozone layer or global warming or a combination of the two? Well, l let me make it to the point this way. When uh, you talk about military matters, you talk about local conflicts, regional theaters of action, and strategic conflicts. Same with the environment. You've got local environmental problems, regional problems like acid rain, now we've got a whole new category of global or strategic problems, which include the hole in the ozone layer, which now could appear above the United States, global climate change, the destruction of the rainforest at a rate that means they'll be totally gone in another few decades unless we stop, the pollution of the oceans and the atmosphere and the like. These represent brand new challenges that call for a new kind of response. Rush, I've, I've listened to you many afternoons, as you know, uh, and you tend to, I don't want to say you dismiss all of these issues, but at least you dismiss them as having been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. Well, ab absolutely. I don't think that there's anything conclusive about what Senator Gore said, with all due respect. I think, for example, there is no ozone hole over the United States. Uh, and if we want to get into detailed discussion of ozone depletion, we can. But uh, I, I think, Ted, that there is not a crisis. See, this is the problem I have. I don't think the earth is fragile. I don't think the ecology is fragilely balanced. And I think that the doomsday industry that is typified by members of the Hollywood acting community who say we've only got 10 years left to save our planet, we've got to act now. There's no way, if what these people say is true, that we can solve these problems in 10 years anyway. It's budget time in Washington, NASA's being cut, and I think that this, this fright and, and uh, doom scenario is designed to frighten people Everything in this country today seems to be a crisis. We can't do anything without it being half, uh, having to face it as a crisis. We don't have any time to think about it. Uh, there are as many scientists, uh, maybe even more, on the opposite side of all of these doomsday predictions. And, and I think that that's they need to be true. listened to. As, yeah, oh, yes, there are. That, that's not true. If I could jump in there, Ted. Uh, Russ uh, did identify, I think, the key point of disagreement early in his first response. And that is the question of whether or not the Earth is fragile. Are we, as human beings, now capable of doing serious damage to the global environment? That's really the key difference. Do you think we are? Between the, yes, I think so. I think for three reasons, Russ. I think, I think three things have changed in our lifetimes, incidentally. Number one, 
the population explosion now adds the entire population of China every 10 years. Number two, we've got new technologies we never had before, like chlorofluorocarbons, which magnify our impact on the Earth. Just as nuclear weapons transformed warfare, these thousands of new technologies that magnify our ability to exploit the Earth change our relationship to the let, Earth. Let me, just, let me just interrupt for a moment, if I may, Senator, because, uh, you know, what I know confuses certainly a lot of people who will listen to Russia's program every afternoon uh, is that he will state, as a matter of fact, that there is indeed disagreement within the scientific community. Now, there may well be disagreement within the scientific community, but you seem to state just as forcefully that there is, if not unanimity, that certainly the preponderance of scientific opinion is in agreement Th that these things are a massive danger. There, now, there's you know, no question. That for me. There's no question about that. Let me compare it to this situation. You can find today some scientists who work for tobacco companies who will claim with a straight face that there is no proven link between smoking and lung cancer. And if you look closely at the scientific data, you have to admit that there are uncertainties. We don't know exactly how smoking causes lung cancer. But the weight of the evidence accepted by the overwhelming preponderance of scientists is yes, smoking does cause lung cancer. And so we act on that knowledge from the scientific community, even though there are some remaining uncertainties. Where the ozone hole is, concern, for example, the linkage between these chemicals, chlorofluorocarbons, and the ozone hole is established. There may be one one hundredth of one percent of the scientific community that disputes it. Now. Oh, no, no, no. It's far more than that. Uh, Rush, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, first, first, let's, uh, if, if we can, we're going to take a break, Rush. When we come back, uh, I'll give you a chance to respond. Right. We'll continue our discussion in just a moment. rather walk than drive an American car. You think no American car can match the quality of an import. You figure if it isn't foreign, it isn't for you. You wouldn't give an American car the time of day. Well, in case you haven't noticed, times have changed. Introducing the new Skylark. This is the Buick that's going to change a lot of impressions about Buick. Gee, sounds awful, Bob. It's no day at the beach, Steve. Sore throat, cough. Try one of these. Sugar-free nice showers your throat with medicine for icy, cool relief. Oh, cool. Feels better. Mm. Guess it's back to work for me. Yeah. Put your throat on ice with nice. When you receive your pre-approved Discover Card application, mm. sign it. Oh, thank you. Because you can't earn cash back. Until you get it back, oh. it pays to discover. of a lifetime. Hi, I'm Babe Winkleman. Join me at the All Canada Show where you can win some great prizes. Your Would our government experiment with people's lives and not tell them? You bet. The guinea pigs, 400 black men suffering syphilis. Prime time, thirst. You want to live a longer and healthier life? Tomorrow, some simple steps to help you do just that. Also, Julian Lennon will stop by and Neil Patrick Harris here on Good Morning America tomorrow. Rush Limbaugh, we both run into politicians during our careers who know how to fake it on an issue. I don't know of anyone up on Capitol Hill who is more knowledgeable on the subject of the environment than Al Gore. Uh, you, you have to take seriously what he says. Oh, look, I don't mean any disrespect to Senator Gore. I think that Senator Gore is a well-intentioned man and, and only is doing what he thinks best. And I think that the vast majority of people concerned about the environment will fall into that camp. But I think, Ted, that the environmental movement, as as fueled by the militants who lead it, uh, I think is the new home of socialism. I think it is, they, they've adopted a constituency here which can't speak, that is trees and rocks and so forth, and can't reject the so-called help and concern that the advocates are giving it, and it gives them a stage from which to constantly launch, a, launch attacks at capitalism. 
if, uh, if you listen to what Senator Gore said, it is man-made products which are causing the ozone depletion, yet Mount Pinatubo has put 570 uh, times the amount of chlorine into the atmosphere in one eruption than all of man-made chlorofluorocarbons in one year. And uh, the, the ultraviolet radiation measured on this country's surface since 1974 has shown no increase whatsoever. And if there's ozone depletion going on, you're going to have uh, UV radiation levels going way, way up, and they simply aren't. Uh, the sun makes ozone, and there is an ozone hole in the Antarctic Circle and the Arctic Circle simply because the sun's below the horizon for a portion of the year. It, th this is not a big mystery, and there are people who will tell you that, such as Dixie Lee Ray, the former president of the Atomic Energy Commission, the governor of the uh, state of Washington, and a respected scientist, and she has her own book out called Trashing the Planet, which debunks a number of these myths. Right, and I've talked to her about it, and, us, and I happen to subscribe to her theory. Uh, let us give Senator Gore a chance to respond. Thanks. Senator? I'd like to respond on two points. Uh, first of all, on a technical point, volcanoes put chlorine in the atmosphere, but at a very low altitude. Mount Pinatubo has had an effect on the depletion uh, of ozone, but because the particulates go up so high, now in the presence of the chlorofluorocarbons and other chemicals like bromine, they accelerate uh, the, de the depletion that is going on. But I wanted to get back to a, a more important point. Again, a matter, a matter of philosophy. I think, Ted, that Rush sincerely believes that uh, the global environmental crisis is kind of hyped and it's a fiction, uh, hyped by some people who are using it as an excuse to expand the role of government or, or the state. Absolutely. No but, question but, about it. But let me respond, because I think it's ironic, Rush, that most environmentalists who have, have really studied these global issues point the finger of blame at centralized government power uh, as much as at anything else. The worst problems oh, have Senator. been caused by communist nations where the power of government is strongest, like in Eastern Europe. Senator, you're absolutely right, but you're one of the few voices saying that most of the fingers of blame are pointed at U.S. business are pointed at evil corporate America, which doesn't care about the environment of the United States. Well, I argue that, that both capitalism and democracy and individual freedom have to be expanded around the world as preconditions and prerequisites for solving the global ecological crisis. We agree. We and agree some, totally. Some businesses are now beginning to see the light and recognize that there's a huge market worldwide opening up for the new ecologically responsible products and processes. Right. That's why but we don't do it by shutting them down, Senator. See, one of the Nobody's million... trying to shut them well, down. Well, but Just you may not be, but there, there are those who want to shut down business, who want to blame American business for the problems that we have, and they want to go back to the Stone Age and preserve everything as it is now for the rest of time. And I, I don't, don't think that's workable. You may not prescribe to this, and I, I would suggest that that maybe you, uh, I, I, I don't want to in, in, impugn you or insult you, but I, as I say, I think your intentions are honorable and, and, uh, and, f and full bore, but I think you may not uh, uh, be aware of just some of the hideous leadership that no, we don't even know the names of these people. I mean, they're not public let, let me they ask, are. Let me ask you this, Russ. No. Why do you think Japanese businesses, the Kidan Ren, who, who uh, is the, th that big Japanese business organization, why do you think they have set much tougher environmental standards for Japanese corporations that are established in, in U.S. law. I don't know that they have. You don't, I don't think they're soft-headed on, on competition. But, but I think the reason is twofold. Number one, they see this new market opening up. Sure. Number two, That's they discovered point. that waste in the form of pollution is also economic waste. And when they pay careful attention to eliminating the inefficiencies and the wasteful mm -hmm. processes, their profits go up. And American companies that have sincerely undertaken the effort to be responsible towards the environment are discovering the same thing. Senator, I don't disagree with that at all in, in, in any way, shape, matter, or form, but you must understand that there are those who seek to blame American business for causing these problems. Uh, this, this, this movement that was highlighted in the setup package for the show tonight, there clearly is a movement on to take as much land back from private ownership as possible and give it back to the government so that it's off limits for private property ownership. And that, as you know, is fundamental to the American way of life. And I consider it an assault on the American way of life. I think that setup piece was brilliantly put together. And it's about time that kind of thing <laughs> was exposed because the other side, uh, quite frankly, has had its way with a willing media. Well, actually, you've, you've just confirmed my worst fears because I saw Al Gore wincing throughout the setup piece. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was I'd, good. I'd, I'd, I'll tell you what, gentlemen, we're down to about our last 45 seconds, so a, a closing thought then from you, Senator Gore. We just heard from Rush Limbaugh. 
Well, there's a classic experiment in science, uh, Ted, about a frog that's dropped in a pot of boiling water and jumps right out. When the same frog is put in a pot of lukewarm water that's slowly brought to a boil, it just sits there until it's rescued. A frog's nervous system needs a sudden jolt to get the connection. We're like that frog. We're getting the signals of ecological devastation around the world, but we're still dead in the water. The ozone hole is threatening to open up above North America, above Kennebunkport. And still, we're not reacting. But the American people want to see us take this problem seriously and do something about it. All right, Senator Gore, I thank you very much. Rush, you'll have three hours tomorrow afternoon to respond. Thanks there's no ozone depletion. It. There's no crisis. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> okay, I thank you both. Good of you to join us. I'll be back in a moment. Today, Tech Tread Shoe Corporation announced a major retail expansion in 25 U.S. cities. When I see a company that looks like a good investment, I check it out myself. We make it easier to follow your own lead. At Charles Schwab, I can get quotes, financial news, and when I make a trade, commission savings. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. Every sports sedan is supposed to do well in the fast lane. But what about these lanes? At Lexus, we've achieved extremely tight tolerances between all major body panels. So not only does the ES300 look like it's put together well, it actually is put together well. You can do it. You can stretch your buying power during Dollar Dazzlers at True Value Hardware Store. Don't miss the store-wide savings during this great event. You'll find fantastic values for just one dollar. From famous names like GE, Master Mechanic, Empire, Borden, and many more. These great savings end soon. So stop by a True Value Hardware Store displaying the Dollar Dazzlers banner today. If you're looking for a great vacation, tart at the top. Take a three, four, or seven day fun ship vacation on Carnival, the most popular cruise line in the world. Today's pork. What's missing? 31% of the fat. Pork, the other white meat. Later on most of these stations, World News Now will have the latest news, sports, and weather. And tomorrow on World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, an experiment in providing health care to children who have none. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. This has been Nightline. Nightline is a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. Wednesday, Sydney appeals to the judge. I'd like to take you to dinner. I'd really rather we didn't pursue this. You know, I like feistiness of a woman up to a point. And the evidence is overwhelming. This evening has a magical feel for me. My trousers are getting tight. <laughs> Civil Wars, Wednesday at 10, 9 Central. Becoming partly cloudy overnight with a low in the 20s. taking your favorite gags from the past few months
We rolled them into a special week of shows. We have even included some exciting new stuff that you have never seen before. In today's first gag, ooh, Candid Camera proved once again that what you see <laughs> and what you think you see can be two very different things. Watch closely. <laughs> it's lunchtime at Pet Emporium in Burbank, California. At least for our Murray Langston who loves fish. Mm -hmm. You're so good. Oh, my goodness, he's really eating carrots, cut to look like fish. But the folks in the store bought it hook, line, and sinker. Oh, my God. What? Did you I figured out it's a carrot, but his wife sure didn't. Would you like mine? Please, seriously. Have you ever been blamed for something you didn't do? Yes. And that's the basis of this next favorite involving a serious business meeting and a whoopee cushion. I didn't do it. You go to Jenkins International. Why don't we go around and introduce yourselves? A high-level meeting is enough to make a newcomer nervous. But at this phony conference, all the folks work for us, except for some unsuspecting secretaries, like this guy, who's about to become the center of attention. Over any other company, our nearest competitor that we know of. Downside. Yeah, the truth is, we rigged the chair. The oldest trick in the book, but it always works. Everyone is keeping their research in this area very hush-hush. Uh, and in fairness, we have a How embarrassing! What must be going through this man's mind? But here's what he had to say. Yeah, are you all right? I don't know. Tell me the truth. Well, none of our folks are going to argue with him. Everyone just tried to play it cool and act nonchalant about the whole thing. They are taking steps after the fact. I mean, mm. let's be frank here. The beauty of the situation is we are aliens to a are you all right? I'm fine. That chair can make the noise, and that's not me. Watch this next guy, the fella on the left. Public <laughs> concern. Finally, in desperation, this guy just decided to play it safe. Scott, can you sit in the chair, please? I would appreciate that. Sort of noise. Is the noise bothering anybody greatly? No. No. Now we really put the pressure on. I think I should get on this chair. will still make noise. I don't know. I thought that. Yeah, after a while, it was hard to keep folks sitting down. Anyone but we had some that news that might clear up the problem. Should be justly awarded. And, right. and I think that your just reward at this point in time is going to be to just sit in your chair and smile because you're on candid camera. No, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not. Yes, <laughs> no. <laughs> Right back. I want to lose weight, but which one? I don't know about all these, but Dynatrim works for me. How much have you lost? Well, this is what I looked like before. You did lose weight. Eight pounds in the first month. And Dynatrim is so thick and filling, it helps me lose weight without feeling hungry. Come on. Really? With Dynatrim, I feel full, satisfied. And you're still losing weight without feeling hungry. The Dynatrim Weight Loss Plan. Fills you up to trim you down. Shower yourself with a new sensation. New refreshing shield. Feel the blast. The high energy beat of shield's unique skin invigorating formula. Refreshment that'll turn you around. New refreshing shield. It's back. The little cold that turns into a miserable cough. This is the cold Triaminic was made for. It stops cold symptoms cold. Treat your child's cold early with a pediatrician's choice. Triaminic. 
It stops all symptoms cold. for over 25 years. Next Donahue, the controversial Madeline Murray O'Hare on atheism. I am so happy that I have been lost from all of this religious nonsense. On the image of God. Wouldn't you all be surprised if you went up there and it was half black? Nation's number one atheist, Madeline Murray O'Hare, returns after 25 years on the next Donahue. Wednesday at 9 on Channel 5. On the next Jenny Jones. Falling in love with the wrong man. The bad boys, the naughty ones, the ones that make you crazy. Why do you do it? Logic and romantic love have nothing to do with each other. How to survive a bad relationship. Were you aware that you were picking the same type of guy the second time? And find Mr. Right. What? Some people say it's scandalous. Revealing fashions for the office. I would wear the jacket clothes during the day. And the women who wear them on the next Jenny Jones. Wednesday at 3 on Channel 5. <laughs> So many cards and letters from you girls out there when we first showed this next gag about a sexy guy posing in a photo booth. Well, we just had to show it again. <laughs> and here it is. We had our John Sahokian ask women in this shopping mall to hold his dry cleaning while he took a couple of quick photos. Thank you very much. But the photos John's actually taking are a little different from the ones these gals are imagining. But I'll admit, it does look like more than a candid photo session. If you were standing there, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think of the picture? It's just a picture. It's for my passport. Here we go. One, two, three. Last one. Four. This woman is great. She's trying to sound casual, but watch. She's convinced that John is, well, a little weird. Can I see your photo on page? Sure. She tried to call John's bluff, and he agreed. <laughs> now she's not sure what the heck is going on in there, or why. I hope they don't come out before I'm done here. Oh, the big question now is, will these women really try to see the pictures? How long does it say it uh, takes for those suckers to pop out? Because hey, I don't want them to pop out before I get out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but just as John comes out, we have his beeper go off. Uh-oh, right he has to leave right to make a phone call. Here come the pictures. Oh, my goodness. Do you think they're going to take a peek? John's not here. He's making a phone call. He'll never know. This girl is losing the argument with herself, I tell you. Maybe just one little look. <laughs> oh, dear, I don't know if I should do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to peek a little bit. Ah. Oh, no! Smile! You're on candid camera. And there's ah. the camera right there. <laughs> Deliver this to that room over there. That sounds simple, doesn't it? Oh, no. Now, when Candy Cameron's involved, we'll get you coming and going. Watch this fabulous fellow in this next gag. <laughs> I went to the Arbor office suites in Washington, D.C. and set up a phony business, complete with a pretty boss and her assistant. Then we brought in some folks to help them out. Their first job, pretty simple. Take a package to another room on the same floor. I need to deliver these important papers as soon as possible. So, if you can do it now. Sure. Okay, so halfway up. Go ahead. Sure. Let, let me show you. Get, what you can do is go, go down the hall. Mm -hmm. There's some construction going on, so before you get there, make a right. Go all the way down, make a left, make another left, follow it down this long hallway. It forks off, go to your right, you'll see a sign. All right, let me show you what the sign The sign will say, 
My name, AKA Merchandising. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, no sweat. A couple of lefts and rights, and he's there. Or is he? Well, Daniel, it hasn't come down. Chris? Chris? What happened? I'm sorry, no, I, I lost direction. I made up. Wait, <laughs> you, got, you must have got... I must have made... Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, before the construction of the light, mm -hmm. then left. He fell right into our candid camera trap because we set up two identical offices in both ends of the building, complete with two sets of identical twins. It says eight and. Okay, you'll see it. All right. Okay. degree and all, and, and I'm sorry I can't match this jersey. Remember, perhaps that would make it, it's the construction that's throwing me off. Is it in the suite over here? Imagine, if you will, an office worker lost in the twilight zone. Everything's a lot clearer. I, I'm beginning to suspect something's going on here. You're smiling. Something is going on. Something is going on. Don't you smile. You're going to the camera. This show is packed full of fun, and when we come back, Candy Camera creates a cookie fortune cookie. Music presents Mellow Gold. 40 of the most memorable hits from this.